Hello everyone and welcome to the first episode of the Trail Talk Show. In this week, we'll take a look at my brand new bike. I'll also provide some handy tips for new bike day. We'll also go over some of your questions that you've submitted, check out some of your rides, go over the news over the past couple of weeks, and I'll also have a chat to a fellow mountain bike content creator. And just quickly before we jump in, the show has no sponsors at the moment, but if you do want to support the show, I do have some affiliate links in the description below for Bikes Online as well as Bicycles Online as well, if you want to grab a Polygon or even a Marin as well. So new bike day is definitely very exciting, but when you are buying a bike online or buying a bike that is in a box, it is definitely worthwhile taking your time. Just to ensure you don't make any silly mistakes that could delay you getting on the trail in the long term. So here's three useful tips that I've found really useful on new bike day. The first one is to always keep the packaging, at least for those first few weeks. So take some care not to chuck it out straight away, put it aside and make sure you don't take it off super recklessly. Make sure you can reuse it again, just in case you purchase the wrong size, there's an issue with warranty or you change your mind or anything like that, depending on the return policy, I would always advise keeping that stuff. I also advise checking a lot of the return policies as well because some brands don't offer a test ride period. So I would check out that first and definitely try the bike out for size indoors as well. And then if it doesn't fit there, then you can return it as well. Another thing as well with the packaging, some parts can get caught on the packaging. I know the hub end caps on a lot of the bikes these days can get caught on the packaging. So keep an eye on that. Just make sure you don't chuck that stuff out. The next tip is dialing in the fit on your new bike. The first one would definitely make sure you get the right size. So check the manufacturer's sizing guide or the website you're purchasing the bike on. Usually they have a sizing guide for you. And if you are a bit confused, definitely reach out and ask a few questions. But if you do have a bike already that fits you very well, here's a handy tip to make sure you get the fit dialed on that new one exactly the same. So this is a tip that a lot of the pros actually use. I think Sam Hill uses it when he's determining the sizing in all the geometry of his new bike. So what you wanna do is get the handlebar height as well as the spread. So the handlebar height, pretty self-explanatory. Lean the bike up, make sure it's perfectly straight so it's not tipping one side or the other. And then you wanna measure the ground all the way up to the handlebar on both sides because if it's leaning one side, you'll be able to see if it's a difference there and that'll give you your bar height. And then you wanna triangulate that with your spread measurement. So you wanna get your pedal to around three o'clock so make sure it's even and then measure from the middle of the axle there all the way up to the end of the handlebar, so in the middle there. And that'll give you what's effectively your spread. So it'll essentially be how the bike feels when you're standing up on it. And with the bar height, that'll give you an accurate measurement there. So then you can go ahead and compare these measurements on your new bike, and then you can adjust the height of the handlebars, bar roll, all that kind of stuff. You wanna put a shorter stem, if you have a shorter stem, and then that should give you a really good baseline from going to your old bike to your new one. Another thing to note, this will translate better from a dual suspension to a dual suspension versus like a dual suspension to a hardtail because with a hardtail, you're only compressing the front of the bike, so that will change things versus a dual suspension when you're compressing both. So it might be worth doing a sag measurement if you're going from a dual suspension to a hardtail, that will give you the closest measurement. And the last one probably is the most important, and this really wanna make sure the bike's built properly, not just the parts that you've put on, but make sure the whole bike has been assembled properly. And that goes for the bolts, pivots, all the moving parts on the bike. And you might get angry when some of these things go wrong, but bear in mind, everyone's human. People do make mistakes from time to time, so it definitely is worthwhile checking these things. So what we used to do when I used to work at a bike shop, we used to do something called an M check. So what you wanna do firstly is check that the rear axle is tight, then you wanna move into the wheel, ensuring the tires are inflated, they're mounted correctly, and the brakes aren't rubbing. Then move up to the saddle, ensuring all the bolts are tight and the seat post isn't moving either. Then you go back down to the cranks, make sure they're all tight as, long as, as well as the pedals too. Then move back up to the bars, checking the bars and stem are tight and the headset isn't moving back and forth. And then down to the brakes and make sure those are in working order. And then down to the front wheel, checking exactly what we do in the rear of the bike. And once you've done all this, it's all ready to go, but I'll leave a video in the description for a full M check. So if you wanna do that yourself, you can check that out there with all the tips to do it. Welcome to the first ever content creator of the week. In this segment, I talk to other fellow mountain bike content creators. And the first creator we have is very new to the YouTube scene. He's a fellow Aussie and does some awesome trail building content. And that's Luke from Cutlaps. Okay, so we are here with Luke from Cutlaps. So, hey man, how are you going? Yeah, not bad. Thanks for having me. So my first question, I guess, you've kind of got the ball rolling pretty quickly with the content. It's really nice already but what kind of got you into starting a mountain bike youtube channel it's i i've actually only been riding for about two years and um as soon as i did start getting into mountain biking um immediately i guess it's sort of cliche to say but immediately 
I started seeing the world differently. So you'll be driving along and you start picturing lines down mountains and um, you go past a river, like a creek, and you're like, oh, you could build a jump across here or, you know, a drop off some rock. Um, and so I was always drawn to sort of creating these things. And then um, so eventually I just bought a, you know, $5 rake, $5 shovel and got out there and started raking these trails. And um, yeah, that, that's kind of the, how it all started. And then watching all these other YouTube videos on, um on trail building um i was like well i love to, i love you know building these things myself i'm out there doing it i've got all the camera gear i know how to edit videos i might as well start my own channel and that's how it was born yeah awesome yeah so you can definitely tell that your editing and videography is pretty good um do you have much experience with that kind of stuff before like i heard in one of your videos that you were originally a graphic designer and stuff like that so what kind of is your background with the i guess the filming and editing yeah, so I am a graphic designer. I've been doing that for um, about 10 years now and um, a bit of video work comes into that and editing for sort of cinema advertisements and stuff like that or interviews. Um, but really I got into it um, at a young age. My dad had a camcorder, so we were just out filming, you know, whatever it happened to be, family videos. And um, then I really got into snowboarding and so I took the camera up the slopes and started making my own little um, snowboard edits, YouTube videos and stuff like that. So that's, yeah, really the background from it. And um, I've always, yeah, always loved to film and edit and share my story. So, yeah, kind of a no-brainer. And so the trails definitely look pretty fun and flowy as they are. Um, then you've started adding on features. Um, how much uh, elevation do you have to play with on the property? Uh, we've got about 100 metres um, of elevation, okay. which is awesome, and a couple of different valleys and stuff. So there's a lot of potential for the trails there. Yeah. I feel like the the 100 metres of elevation is like the standard in any Australian trail. I feel like everything's about 100 metres. Yeah. I know where we used to always ride in Sydney, like the top, the max that we'd always get is about 100. And so you've got like, I think it's, you said it was around about a K long, the, the trail that you've got at the moment. Yeah, the current trail, I think it's about just under a kilometre at the moment, but um, there's that's only taking up sort of the first half of the hill. I think we're using about 60 metres of elevation with that. And then, um, you know, so it's it can go a lot longer as well. I think by the end of this trail, it'll probably be um, closer to 2Ks, but, you know, we'll see once it's all built. Awesome. And what's the plans next for the trail? What feature have you got coming up in your next video? Uh, next video, I'm actually editing it right now. Um, awesome. So all the filming's done, thankfully. It's taken a while, but um, it's the stump drop. So I'm building this big wooden bridge up to this old stump, and which you can just ride along and drop off the, the back of it. Um, I was pretty nervous hitting it, so I even built myself, I'm calling it the chicken bridge. That's sort of a down ramp to the dirt, which um, was just a bit of a confidence booster, but that's actually removable. So... Um, it's good because it makes the trail more accessible. So, if, you know, some beginners are riding it, you can just roll down this drop. And then if you want to get a bit more gnarly, just remove that and you've got about a four or five foot drop then. Awesome. What's the favourite feature you've built so far on the trails? Oh, it's got to be that one for sure. I mean, yeah, um, I really... Definitely looks the part. <laughs> yeah, it's been good with um, just getting a lot more confident with the chainsaw and debarking wood i'm learning a few more techniques that um i haven't really actually put to use anywhere else so yeah i noticed uh backyard trail builds does a lot of the debarking stuff is that to do with just to prevent rot or is it more of just i guess look thing no it's actually yeah entirely to do with rot i mean it does look good as well but um yeah <laughs> it stops it actually increases the life of the feature about two times so um okay the bark really holds the water in the moisture on the wood, which helps it yeah. to rot. And it also creates little, um, you know, cavities for bugs to grow when start eating the wood. So, yeah. yeah. And I noticed that you got a fair bit of wildlife there. Uh, the snakes started to come out a bit more. I saw you had a red belly in one of your previous videos and you're starting to see a bit more. Yeah, no, well, that was actually the first day of filming. Um, and I can remember I just came around the corner with a POV on and there was this red belly black snake right in the middle of the trail. <laughs> so, I mean, I knew it was going to happen eventually. I just didn't realize it would happen day one. Um, yeah. But yeah, there's, you know, we got the snakes, we got spiders, there's everything like ticks. I mean, I usually come home with a tick on me somewhere about once a week. So that's um, that's crazy. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, what bike do you ride as well? That's always a question everyone likes to ask. I think it is. I think it's a Norco I saw. 
Yeah, I'm on the Norco Optic. Um, I think it was the 2020 model, yeah. I wanted to get the Norco Sight, but um, just as I was upgrading to my dual suspension, the um, COVID had struck and then there was a massive bike shortage that they're still suffering from. So I um, managed to get my hands on the Optic and, yeah, never looked back. It's awesome. I think. I think that was a smart move. I, I yeah. ruined both of them. And I felt, I think the Norco, the, the Optic was a little bit, I prefer the Optic. It was just a bit more fun. And like yeah, it's such right. a long bike and it's like pretty stable as is. So I liked how it was a little bit more popular than the site. Val and that, yeah. So where can people find you? Instagram, YouTube, and what kind of, have, what have you got coming up coming in the future? Um, yep. So I'm on Instagram and YouTube. Um, it's just uh, Cutlapse is the name. Try and spruik it as much as it's possible. Good name. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, so what have I got coming up in the future? I'm really just sort of taking it um, episode by episode. I mean, I've got most of the features planned out for the trail as is, but like I say, we've got 100 meters of elevation and 160 acres, um, and I've just been walking the entire thing with GPS um, apps and taking photos of different object. Like, there's there's just so much potential for these features. So. I've got my own little trail network planned out and yeah. drawing them out, which I have a great time sort of planning all those sort of things as well. But, um, you know, we've got downhill trails and flow trails and the climb trails all planned out. So it's a, it should be your own sort of own private bike park, which is pretty awesome. Yeah. Thanks so much for having me on your channel. It's been awesome. And, um, yeah, I'll have to, you know, once lockdown's over, we'll um, have to get you down here and you can do some trail reviews. Yeah, definitely. I need to come back down to Sydney. I actually missed my wedding. It's because of lockdown, so I need to come down pretty soon. So that was meant to be in about three weeks' time. So, yeah, I have to come down. need to come down for work anyway. So I'll keep going yep. further south and, yeah, definitely check out the trail sometime. Yeah, plan a road trip. It would be awesome. Welcome to this week's episode of Mountain Bike News where we cover all things mountain biking, especially all the new bikes that have just been released. So the first thing is that Transition finally has some alloy bikes again. So a lot of people have been upset because they love Transition because they were originally all alloy bikes, but they've been releasing all their new bikes carbon first. So it's great to see that they're kind of trickling that down back to the alloy, but it would be nice to see a few more alloy bikes on release. But it's good that we've got them now, so let's check them out. So we just got alloy versions of the Scout and Sentinel. So there's going to be a 27.5 and 29 option for those people out there. And they're kind of more all mountain bikes, definitely the Scout. And then the Sentinel is pushing more towards that Enduro end of the all mountain realm. So you are paying a little bit extra because it is more of a boutique brand, but the builds are pretty smart and you do get a great set of suspension. And then the brakes and tires are good on the bikes as well. So not much to change from factory. And next up, we have the Nukeproof Mega and Giga, and they are now available in mullet from the factory. So you can purchase the mullet frames. So the mullet essentially is the 29 front end of the frame, and then they've matched that to the 27.5. So pretty easy way to get those frames and set them up mullets. And then looking at the Geo, they're still pretty dialed. I noticed with some bikes, they've kind of, when they've gone to the mullet, it's kind of skewed things and it doesn't feel the best, but it's good to see the geometry looks good from just the normal versions to the mullet as well. So it seems like they've nailed that there, but Again, jury's out on the mullet for me, but I'll talk about that in a future video. Next up, in the past week, the 2022 Polygon Siskiyou D lineup was released. So same frame as last year, but there's some new colors. And I've had a few questions about the Siskiyou T and N as well. For the Siskiyou T, the colors are the same for the next year, so everything carries across to 2022. And unfortunately, I don't have an update for the N series at this point in time. Next up, we have the Orbea Rayon. And when this bike originally came out, the first version, it was absolutely awesome. It was probably one of my dream bikes at the time. And it was really part of that initial wave of these Enduro 29ers. There was the Trek Slash, Evil Reckoning, Transition Sentinel, the first one. And it was kind of in that initial wave. So yeah, it was due for an update. But like all 29er Enduro bikes, it's got pretty much the standard these days. So 64 to 64.5 head angle, and then a 77 to 77.5 degree seat angle, depending on which position the flip chip's in. So pretty standard, and that reach on that large is 485. So looks like it's gonna be a nice, fast race bike for those who really wanna push the limits on the Enduro track. Another cool bike that dropped as well is the Rocky Mountain Element. So it was originally kind of more that XC, BC, bike race kind of edition bike, so typical down country bike, I guess. It's pretty much a trail bike now, so looking at the figures, the geometry is pretty much perfect for me, bang on what I want. So in that slack setting, 76 degree seat angle, 65 head angle, 475 reach. So bang on those numbers, which I like at my height of 185 centimeters. 
and it's got 120 millimeters in the rear and 130 up front. So that's pretty much what I want these days for my ride style. And, but unfortunately the bike is a little exy for what you get. So probably won't be riding one anytime soon, but it does look like a really nice bike if you can afford it. So that rounds out all the new bikes over the past couple of weeks. If I missed any bikes, definitely leave them in the comments and I'll get around to answering what I think of the bike or if you have any questions about it as well. So moving on to this week's Q&A, and this is where I answer your guys' questions. So if you ever have any questions you want me to answer, leave them in the comments and I'll get around to answering them in the next couple of weeks. So the first question comes from Killian, and he says, when looking for a used bike, how old is too old for a high-end bike? So at this point in time, I'd probably say around three years is probably the mark that I would go for. And that's mainly because most of the major geometry changes on bikes that I noticed a huge difference with kind of happened in the last three to five years. So if you can get anything newer than three years, that's ideal for me. But as with any used bike, you really wanna make sure that they've serviced the bike regularly, particularly the suspension, because this is really expensive for you to do. So if they've done that recently, that's gonna really save you a lot in the long run. And his second question that was also asked from James as well, um, best riding destination that I've been to in Australia. And uh, for me, it's gotta be Derby. I really enjoyed my time there. And when the borders open up, hopefully I can go back there soon. Um, I did prefer it a little bit compared to Medina, but I think my Medina experience wasn't the best because it was, it rained so much there and the trails weren't necessarily the best because it was super clay and a bit slick. So yeah, I'd probably say Derby is my favorite that I've ridden so far. Uh, we've got a question from Dan here about carbon parts. I think I might've read this wrong, but bear with me. So is it worthwhile for carbon bars and cranks? Um, I think he's, what he's saying is wheels seem like the major benefit based on the weight and stiffness of them compared to alloy versions. Um, so starting with the bars, I've written some notes here, so bear with me if I'm looking at it. So bars, I actually prefer the 31.8 bars compared to the 35s. In alloy, I feel like the 35 is just way too stiff and I don't think there was anything wrong with 31.8. So then everything kind of went up to 35. So then they were like, oh, bound is compliant. So we'll make them carbon. So there's these carbon 35 mil uh, clamp bars, which do feel a little bit better, but they feel pretty similar to me when I have 31.8 alloy. So I don't know if there was an actual a problem that needed to be fixed there. But in saying that, there are a couple of carbon 35 mil clamp bars that I really like. The one up, they're nice and comfortable. Um, but to be honest, I like 31.8, so I'll stick with alloy. But if you want something that's really compliant, you could probably go 31.8 carbon. So in terms of cranks, I feel like they aren't necessarily super important either in terms of stiffness, unless you're really putting down the watts um, and then weight maybe a little bit, but I'd rather just have other cranks as well. But when it comes to the wheels, I did notice a difference when I used to ride carbon wheels on my Norco site. And those carbon wheels on that bike really transformed the bike. It accelerated a lot quicker. Being a 29er, I did notice the difference there. They were lighter as well as stiffer. But in saying that, carbon wheels can be too stiff. And in this situation, they were probably on the stiffer side. So I did notice in going into corners, they didn't flex as much compared to alloy. And that did actually lead to a little bit less grip because with alloy, they flex into the corner and that does give you a little bit more grip. So I did notice I did need to run a little bit less pressure in the front tire. But in saying that, there's some really good compliant carbon wheels out there these days that will give you that acceleration that you want as well as the compliance. Zips just to name one. But in saying that, if you get a good set of alloy wheels, they can have a pretty reasonable weight and they're nice and compliant as well. So again, I keep going back to alloy there too. The next question comes from Tappy Trails and he says, what's my thoughts on the Chinese carbon frame reg regarding build quality, finishing kit, and am I confident in its ability to handle jumps and drops? Pretty confident they'll be able to handle most of the riding that I'd be doing. It is a trail bike, so I'm not gonna be doing anything super crazy on it, so no huge hucks to flats. But all the comments on the forum for that frame seem pretty good. Uh, there's never been really major catastrophic failures that would lead to particularly an injury or anything like that. And if there has been a warranty issue, the company has fixed it pretty quickly. And then they've also made changes to the frame so to ensure that that issue doesn't happen again. So I'm pretty confident. Uh, but, the, but looking at the frame, the build quality, all the pivots and that kind of stuff, it actually looks pretty good. But again, with carbon, you can't necessarily see everything. So I guess time will tell there. But it is worthy to note that a lot of brands carbon frames do come from China as opposed to Taiwan. So if you are buying a carbon frame these days, it might not be from Taiwan, it actually might be from China. So again, if you have any questions, definitely leave them in the comments and I'll get around to answering them next week. Okay, so moving on to subscriber rides, not the subscriber bike, my bike, but your rides. So in this segment, I check out the rides that you've sent to me and we'll take a look at them. So the first one comes from Alex and this is probably one of the best emails I've ever received. So the full bill for everything, backstory of the bike, all that stuff, it was awesome to read and it was had all the price for everything as well. So it was really awesome to see the breakdown of the build. 
but the frame is a Merida 120 in the carbon. I really like the Merida 120. It's such a great bike for Australian trails. Nothing super crazy, but the rear suspension is amazing and the bike's super agile. Um, eats up the chunk too, so great bike. So the frame was actually a crash replacement and he bought it from Gumtree. So someone who got it from a warranty and then they sold it. So awesome steal there. But it's got some super smart spec too. That Z2, Dior, um, Sentry wheels. Um, and he's also got the dropper on the way too. So don't worry, that seat post is going. Um, but awesome build. As I said, big fan of the bike too. Um, then we've got Jai. He's got his Trek Fuel EX7. It's the 2021 model. I haven't ridden the new fuels that much. So I'm keen to actually ride one eventually, but awesome bike and looks like you've got some cool trails up there at the top of the mountain too. Moving on to Connor now, and we've got his Marin Alpine Trail XR. Uh, and this is an absolutely awesome bike. Great bike for the spec. Um, the new geometry updates makes this an absolute shredder. Um, I'd like to think of it's kind of like that privateers build. If you were gonna race and looking for a great value bike, this is probably the one that I'd go for. And a lot of the guys' bicycles online, if you were to ask all the guys that ride Enduro which bike they ride, the Alpine Trail is the one that they ride. So I think they've got like, there's four or five of them that all ride this bike. So they're pretty stoked on it. So if you want me to check out your bike, leave me an email or tag me on Instagram as well. So at TrailTalkMTB or leave me a DM there too and I'll show it on the show. So the last thing to talk about this week and that's an update on the subscriber bike. So thank you all for voting. We got an awesome amount of votes. So we had close to 700 to 1,000 votes depending on which poll we were looking at. So let's go into the winners. So for the wheels, I'm super stoked that you went with selling locals. So we got the Craftworks wheels. So I'm gonna hit those guys up and see if I can get a wheel set from them. The next set we have the color of the finishing kit and I'm super stoked that you guys went with teal so it's gonna match all the branding so that's gonna be great for the brand, can market that bike super well. And then next up on the brakes, looks like we played a bit safe here with Shimano but I'm keen to try out some of those other options in the future but yeah, I'm happy you guys wanna keep me safe on the trails and with some good stoppers from Shimano. And then to round it all off as well, pretty standard with the tires, we're gonna stick with Maxxis so if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So we'll get some Maxxis tires as well. I might go for something a little bit faster rolling so maybe something like the Recons. I haven't tested those out too much, but I really like them. So I'll order all these parts now, and then in a future episode of the Trail Talk Show, we'll show all the parts, and then the next time you see a full episode of the subscriber bike, it, the bike will be built up and ready to go. So that rounds up the first week of the Trail Talk Show. Just want to say thanks for tuning in. So, and don't forget to tag me in your bikes on Instagram and stuff like that. Or if you've got a question for anything you want me to answer, leave me in the comments below, and I'll answer it in a future episode of the show. And let me know what you thought of the show. If there's anything you want me to change, different segments, the format, anything, I'm open to suggestions. So leave those in the comments too. But as always guys, thanks for watching. See ya.